So we are in Das Tvinos, in the middle of Simen Kuf Samech, which is page 516. We are talking about how everything, everything was created that for the covet of Hashem, for the honor of Hashem. That's what we talked about last time. Uh, and we talked about how when we do mitzvahs, when we fulfill the commandments, that brings Hashem's honor into the world. And not only that, but it actually elevates Hashem's honor every time we fulfill any of the commandments. So, he's going to expand on that idea this week, and he's going to talk about a specific thing, which is karbonos, sacrifices. Something that's very hard for us to relate to. Right? In the temple, they brought sacrifices, and we read a lot of the Torahs about this, all the different sacrifices that were brought for different things, but when we read about it, it's kind of hard to relate to. So he's actually going to talk about here, which I, f- I found this very meaningful when I was learning it, like, what's the purpose? Well, what's the idea of the sacrifices? Is, is there a deeper meaning? Or are we just like bringing animals because Hashem wants us to bring animals? Or is there a de- deeper meaning to it? So he says, mm-hmm. The elevation of the honor of Hashem is done through all of creation, each doing its own thing, by fulfilling its purpose. When every creation fulfills its purpose, that causes the elevation of Hashem's glory. And this is the intent of the Kohen when he would do the Korbanos. But for the Korban Atamid, specifically the Korban Atamid, the Korban Atamid was the sacrifice that was brought twice a day, in the morning and in the afternoon. And that's why we have the Shachar Semincha services. Those replace the Tamid sacrifice. Tamid literally means constant. So it was brought twice a day. Shnemar Bo es Karbani Lachmi. My sacrifice is my bread, is my food. This was a sacrifice that was brought for the benefit and the purpose of all of creation. And the idea was, by gathering together all the different types of creation, to elevate the glory of Hashem. Each according to what it was related to. And this was a great wisdom that the Kohanim had to know. That they could come before Hashem for the benefit of all the Jewish people. And that their service, the service in the temple, was acceptable before Hashem. So what, what the Korban Hatamid did was, he's going to say, it allowed the spiritual force to come into the world that would sustain the world. That's what the, sacri- that's what the Korban HaTamid, the Tamid sacrifice did. And the way it did that is by taking all elements of creation and directing it towards the honor of Hashem. How do you, how do you see that? So Rav Chaim Freelander writes that the sacrifice had many parts. You had, there was salt that was brought on the altar. There were, um, there was also a flower offering that was brought. And there was also ketores. Ketores were the different spices that come from growing things. And there was also the animal, the animal itself that was brought as a sacrifice. And we use all of those things for the honor of Hashem. And what that happens is, is that causes Hashem's uh, glory to come down to sustain the world. And he says, Rav Chaim Friedland just says, if you look, there are different parts of creation. First we have daimim. Those are things that have no, they're not alive like this table, or a rock. Then we have tzameach, that's something which, is, which grows, like a plant. And then you have chai, something which is an animal. But those are the different levels of creation. Each one's a little higher. So if you look in the Korban Hatamid, it has all of those aspects. We have the salt that we bring. We have the flower offering, which is from a plant, and the ketores, which is from a plant. And then we have the animal itself. So we have every aspect of creation coming together to to glorify Hashem. And that causes what Hashem does in return. We elevate the glory of Hashem. And what Hashem does is He brings back, uh, brings down this sustaining force to the world. It keeps the world going. Now, it's interesting here. He says the Kohanim, if you were a Kohen, you're not a Kohen, right? You are a Kohen? Yeah. Oh, there you go. It's perfect. Right, you and Darren. So the Kohanim, in addition to knowing how to actually do the physical sacrifice and the whole procedure, they had to know the deep intent. They had a very deep intent of what they were doing. They had to have all this in mind about how they were bringing the spiritual forces down to sustain the world. And they said that was a great wisdom that the, all the Kohanim had to learn. So they were da- davening, shachis, uh, they replaced 
the right. Of owners? So right, if you look at right because the the temple was not there any longer. Correct. Were, Correct. So actually, it's very similar. Uh, I was reading here some of the comments are just saying that the what we do in davening, we actually we replace what was in the korbanos. Now, we're not able, to, I'm not exactly sure about this, but I did see a commentary say that we're not able to do as much as the sacrifices through davening, but it's a similar idea in davening. That if you look at Nav Shechayim Sharbez, he talks about how when we daven, we take all the different spiritual worlds and we connect them in order that Hashem could bring, could could impart into the world his spiritual, his spiritual, called Shefa, his spiritual abundance, which sustains the world. So the davening does sustain the world in a similar way to the way that the sacrifices did, which is right. So that that's that's accurate, right? But yeah, so that that's what it does. It sustains the world. Va'al Kain Namar. It says right, and we said that there's, there's great wisdom that the Gohanim had to know. Ki sifse kohen yishmuru daas that the lips of the kohen preserve wisdom. Vitora yivakshmi pi when you should strive to learn Torah from the mouth of the Kohanim. The Kohanim knew this great wisdom, so you should go to them to learn. Their intent was to tie together all of creation with the Creator. And they knew what they needed for this. They knew how to tie together all of creation with Hashem. And like we just said, that's similar to what we do in davening, and they would have intent for every small detail that was needed. And these were all the secrets of each sacrifice. Sounds like each sacrifice had a different secret to tie together the uh, the different creations. Ubizrikas Hadam. Part of the sacrifice was to they would collect the blood and they would pour it. They would spritz it on the altar. So that had a special secret significance, spiritual significance. Ubekatar Sakatiris and bringing the incense. All of them had deep secrets in order to complete all of creation and to have them all tied together with Hashem. This is a very deep and lengthy wisdom. However, this is not the place to go into it. So you didn't realize you're a Kohen. You thought when the temple's going to come, you would just have to learn how to, you know, do the sacrifice. Okay, I'll slaughter, I'll learn how to do shechita, I'll do this, and I'll put the blood. No, there's a great Kabbalistic wisdom you're going to have to learn about how to, all of the secrets of the Avodah, and how that's going to tie together the creations with Hashem. But Amnam, Hagavana Klodosu, but the general idea, so he says he's not going into the particulars of all the sacrifices, but the general idea, who Lakasha call it himself, is to tie together all of creation, the lower worlds and the upper worlds, all of them with the glory of Hashem. It says, Hello, the heavens and the earth I fill. That's the idea, it's, it's the idea of all servants gathering together to, uh, to take shelter under the protection of their master. So he's saying again, that the sacrifices were the sustaining force of the world by bringing together all of creation and tying it together with the upper worlds and to bring down the glory of Hashem. And similarly, we said that's what we do to a certain extent during davening. The Nav Shechayim and Sharbez talks at great length about how when we daven, we're not just saying words, that we are asking things from Hashem and we're praising Hashem, but in addition to what we're doing is, the davening was so powerful, he writes there, that the, we have to be careful in every word, like Rabbi Kippur was just saying, every word of Shemona Esrei, because every word was instituted by the Anshei Kenazat Sagadola, the men of the Great Assembly, who many of them were prophets, and they knew which specific words could have an effect in the heavens to tie together the different worlds to bring down the glory of Hashem. They specifically chose those words because of their spiritual power. So if you know Kabbalah, you would know how each word works. So that's why Neb Shechayim actually writes, when you daven, the best thing to do is, as you say each word, to visualize it in your head. Because he says it's like we're actually sacrificing the word. In place of the sacrifice of the animal that we bring, it's like we're taking the word, no, Baruch, and we visualize the word Baruch, and we're offering the word Baruch to Hashem. Atta. Think of Atta. And, you're, and, and you, you sacrifice that word to Hashem. And, the way, and by doing that, that ties together all the worlds and brings down this sustaining force uh, to Hashem. And it, oh, he writes that that helps for, that helps for Kavana, having intent. During davening, when you're visualizing the words, that helps uh, quite a bit. Let me just do one more section here. So that was about the korbanos. That's the sustaining force of the world. But he says, says, The righteous, though, they have an additional job in the world that they do. Not only to sustain the world, 
but actually to rectify it and to complete the world. This is another another level. Like I told you, what the tzaddikim do, right, davening keeps the world into existence, but what the righteous people do by following the mitzvot is that they are actually rectifying the world. We learned that after the sin of Adam, the world went on a low level, and we're constantly trying to get back up to that level. So he says every time a tzaddik, chayra means anybody who does a mitzvah, what that does is that rectifies the world and brings it closer, brings it back to the world the way it's supposed to be. You know what? Okay, let's just let's stop here. But the idea is that the the, davne, the the sacrifices that we do, and now the davening, that sustains the world by bringing Shafa, by bringing Hashem's, uh, by tying all the worlds together and bringing Hashem's glory into the world. And when we do mitzvos, when we the righteous do mitzvos, and when we learn Torah, that does even more. I'm not saying it's better; it's it's a different job. It's a different job. Mm-hmm. The job is is that the world we're trying to not just sustain the world. We're not just trying to keep the world the way it is. We're trying to make it holier. We're trying to get Hashem closer in the world. We're trying to get more of Hashem's glory in the world. And when that happens, the world goes to its final purpose and gets holier and holier, for lack of a better term, until we're going to when Mashiach comes, we'll reach the level of Adam before he sinned where the world will be a whole new spiritual level. And Hashem, he's going to write now, that how does that happen? Well, that's when Hashem is closer to the world. When Hashem is closer to the world, then there's more goodness in the world, and uh, people recognize Hashem, you won't have wars, bad things happening, because all the bad things that happen are from Hashem hiding himself. So when we do, when the tzaddik does these mitzvos, and does what we're commanded to do, that actually rectifies the world. It fixes the world. The world is broken now. So this actually fixes the world. It's more than just sustaining it, but actually, actually fixing it.